Hey, this is Dave with Taboo Customs. This video today, we are going to be replacing a crankshaft position sensor in this 1998 TJ that I've got sitting behind me. Now, the symptoms we have is that we have a check engine light on. So that's an easy one. Check engine light's on, says crankshaft position sensor. So uh, obviously, we're going to try first replacing the crankshaft position sensor. Hopefully, it's not more of a wiring issue because we've ran into some of those too in the past. Now, some of the other symptoms, though, that we have is that it is sometimes hard to start. Sometimes hard to start, kind of attributing that to possibly not having a good crank sensor uh, signal. Um, also, I do have some times where it just will randomly die, so it kind of loses that signal and doesn't know what to do and will just die. Actually pulling it in, in here into the hoist, it just randomly died when we're trying to get chalk it back and forth and get it positioned. So, if you have some of those things or if your Jeep is maybe running bad, obviously combine that with a uh, code that's being thrown for the crank sensor. Obviously the first thing you might want to try is replacing the crankshaft position sensor. So let's take a look at where that sensor is at. Here we are on the driver's side of the engine compartment. And what we're going to do is we're going to look just behind the intake here and down to the transmission bell housing where it meets the block. You can see there, there's a, um, a small sensor that has a normal loom that runs over to it, not that high temp loom. That is actually the crankshaft position sensor. So that will sense a ring that's attached to the flex plate and allows it to know the position of the crankshaft while the engine's turning. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to disconnect the harness for that sensor. On the 97s, 98s, um, that harness is here on the driver's side. Not exactly sure on uh, you know, 99, 2000, and so on. But I do know at some point they did move that to the passenger side just behind where the distributor would be. And I would guess it's probably around the 2001 range that they did that since uh, around that same time they were also making changes to the distributor. So the first thing is, and it's pretty simple, you can see right here, pretty simple connector. Push down on that, separate the two parts of the connector. Then next we'll need to get underneath and work on loosening up and removing the sensor. All right, so here we are now under the Jeep. This here is the transmission back here, engine up there. You can see right up here the sensor that we'll be working on, which actually is loose so that might be why it's not wanting to read correctly but to take that out there is a single bolt nut sensor and uh for this year it is 11 millimeters so we've got a swivel and a long extension and socket and to add to the difficulty level we added a camera right in the way so let's try to get that on there, get it loose. Okay, with the bolt out now, we can just basically pull it, lift it up out of the hole. Okay, so we did end up getting it out and I'll tell you what we ended up doing. The problem is, is the pinch seam right there, the bottom of the tub pretty much lined right up with it. Now you can see it, someone had already modified that, the cuts there. No idea what the heck they were doing there. But they had cut the pinch seam there for some reason. Anyway, what we ended up doing, and you may not want to do this, but we ended up taking a large pipe and basically pushing that pinch seam up. You can see where we put the pipe up against it. Now, if you don't want to do that, you could obviously let the uh, take the skid plate loose and let the transmission uh, down a little bit in the back, and you'd probably uh, tilt the transmission back and far enough for pretty easily to clear that pinch seam. So then pretty much just slides right out. So here we are with the old and the new. Now the big thing on the new is that there is a little paper piece here on the end of it 
that you do not remove. That's actually for spacing. So when we go to reinstall this, we'll push it all the way down uh, against the, uh, where the inside where it will stop. And then as it spins, it actually will rip that piece of paper off of there. And you're left with basically just plastic on the end. Um, you can see that one picked up grease and shavings and looked like it's fairly old. Maybe it was loose. That's probably part of the reason why it wasn't working. So it might have actually just needed the correct adjustment or it might have slid down and been too close to it. It doesn't, I mean, maybe it was hitting, but it doesn't look like it's incredibly damaged. So now what we're going to do is we're basically going to follow the reverse installation. Um, we're going to slide this in, push it down, tighten up that bolt. Not really going to be able to show you that process with that just because it's so tight up in there. And then we will reconnect this connector and check and make sure that everything is good to go. Now, I don't have a torque spec on this bolt, and honestly, it's going to be nearly impossible to get a torque wrench up in there, but uh, it is a small bolt, so keep that in mind. It is threaded into aluminum, so you don't want it incredibly tight. What we're going to do, since uh, we already know this one came loose, we are going to put some blue Loctite on there uh, just to make sure that it doesn't come loose again. All right, well, this was a short video, really not too difficult. The most difficult thing is getting up there and getting to the sensor. Like I said, if you do have trouble getting it out, it does have to come straight out. It is taller than the older sensors that have two bolts. Don't know why they've only got one bolt holding it. I think they still have the two, but hey, it is what it is. You know, my guess is probably it coming loose is what started causing our issues. Now, I have cleared our codes, uh, started it up, drove it a little bit, does look like it did fix our problem. So hopefully it also fixes your problem if that's what you're looking at doing. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Taboo Customs or contact us on our website at tabucustoms.com.